Hello again, it's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us, Steve Post, in our Concord, North Carolina studios and our Lethal Chassis studios in Mifflintown, Pennsylvania. Ashley Strummy, my cohort here. Hi, Ashley, how are you? Steve, uh, Mother Nature is freezing us out of here lately, um, but of course, nothing's really going on anyhow. So I believe all dirt roads are leading somewhere south, and I can't wait to get there. Yes, indeed. No doubt about it. There is fewer and fewer races on the docket, and uh, we're getting down there. That's for sure. All dirt roads lead to Charlotte. World Finals is coming up in a couple of weeks. World of Outlaw and NASA Energy Drink Sprint Cars did get one in this past weekend. Uh, Lakeside Speedway. Ashley, boy, Donnie Schatz is on a roller coaster ride, isn't he? Holy cow. We have talked about this the, the last couple of weeks, uh, but you can never count Donnie out, right? Isn't that what I always say? Um, maybe that wreck at Port Royal was the glimmer of hope that the team needed going into the last few races of the season. Um, obviously, he's been all over the map this year and destroying that car. They put a new one together and went out and went with it. So fingers crossed, um, obviously, 20th place at Port Royal to going to the win and battling with somebody named David Gravel with the white flag. It, it's just a huge deal, right? Huge deal, that's for sure. Win number 311 on the career for Donnie Schatz. Speaking of drivers who have a lot of wins, our guest is Lance DeWeese. He's got a new deal coming up for this year, or the balance of this year and next year, and we'll talk to Lance next. Perfection isn't easily achieved. It takes hard work, dedication, and perseverance. Through their commitment to excellence, Sage Fruit Company has been supplying customers with the best tree fruit in the Pacific Northwest for over three generations. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide consistent, high-quality apples and pears all year long. Look for Sage Fruit at your local grocery. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline. Joining us from up in the great state of Pennsylvania, Lance Deweese joins us. Hello, Lance. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing today? We are doing well. Lance, try to describe your 2023. Um, we come into this thing and there's tried and true things that we know we're going to have and in 2023, and it's not just you, it seems like the entire sprint car world, how do you put your arms around uh, where you're at, where you're going, and the 2023 season? Well, um, to, to say it's been a whirlwind for me is un an understatement. You know, um, there was some shocking developments with me you know, during the year that I never saw coming, didn't expect to come. <laughs> and then, you know, with that, you know, the, the rest of it, you know, in Central PA, that's kind of, going in a circle and um you know i'm just very thankful for nick and melinda macri to let me drive their car while they try to get everything ironed out with anthony and um you know and let me finish out the year so i had something to race the rest of the year before i found out what i was doing next year it's definitely been interesting across the board but i'm not surprised that you found yourself in the number 12 12 uh barry Shearer car um to kind of hear that lance deweese is without a ride isn't something that i would ever expect and i know that knowing you you have an intricate way that you network and so i was sure there was opportunities available no matter what you ended up choosing but what made you 12 this year family what made you decide to to land there for next year well there's there's a couple different reasons um probably the main one was just the cars i've watched them race it a little bit this year and um you know i watched brent at tux 450 he was really fast there and yeah, the cars have some speed in them, which tells me their stuff's pretty fast. And um, and they just seem, you know, I kind of stood and watched from the top of the trailer to, on how those teams, how that team worked at the racetrack, how the, how everybody involved with it was engaged with each other and just kind of pay attention. You know, I'm, I'm not a very outgoing person as far as, you know, compared to a lot of other drivers, but I pay attention to what's going on a lot and, um, probably pay attention more than what a lot of people realize. So um, I, you know, it just felt like, um, you know, we started, and the funny thing about it, is it kind of feels like the Walter Dyer deal to me because um, 
it was Brent, my son, because he they raced together some with the micros, and they start talking and just basically they kind of had me in the car before me and his dad ever talked. <laughs> so it just and that's kind of how the dire deal happened years ago. So um, it it just worked out. I'm excited. Um, you know we we plan on going to Charlotte now. Um, to race um, with both cars, Brent racing. Um, originally, he was gone, but they can't do the last race of the year at Susquehanna or BAPS, as people know, is it now because they had a family vacation already planned. So, um, so he said, we'll take two cars to Charlotte. I said, fine. So, you know, hopefully we get to race this, this coming weekend some. Um, if not, we're going to try to find, maybe we can hop in a test session at um, BAPS before I end up going to Charlotte, you know, I don't want Charlotte to be the first time I sit in the car, but if it is, it is, you know, that's kind of what we're going down for to see where we're at, see where everything's at. You know, do we have speed, don't have speed and what we need to do for next year. Lance, I want to talk more about the Shearer deal, but you are a hall of fame driver. Um, Was what your, what was your, was there a moment where you said, okay, maybe we need to hang it up. Uh, was was that ever in your mind, or was it always trying to find that next ride? No, I was I was not done. Okay, that was never a thought. Um, trust me, when when I'm done, I'm done. Um, yeah. I've never had that thought in my mind, you know, this year at all. Even with the, some of the struggles we had at the six nine k, um, I know I still can win races. I know I can, you know, get ourselves in position, try to win the bigger shows that are in here. And I also know my limitations. You know, everybody thought I might be the replacement in the, in the 39M. I, that was never an option from day one. Um, and I made that clear to them. And, you know, I'm a 58-year-old guy, you know, with a couple years left of racing that can win, can win at certain places, can win if everything's right. But I'm not the guy to run 80, 90 shows with anymore. And um so, you know, a lot of people, you know, kind of thought the 39M was my deal, but no, that was never any option. I was just a, I was just a fill-in driver for hopefully what transpired, transpired. Lance, you talk about that. Obviously, what you need and want out of a ride now is much different than what it was 20, 25, 30 years ago. With that being said, obviously, you're in the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. You hold several records here in the state as the most winningest driver. Is there still goals that you want to achieve? Is there something on that bucket list that you're still wanting to check off, per se, in your career? Well, there's goals. There's always goals. Um Talks for a 50 every year and Williams Grove National every year. Um, that's always the goal. Um, as far as like a bucket list, um, I always had Knoxville, but that kind of has come and gone for me. Um, so it just, you know, it's just trying to go win the big races that we enter and try to be competitive. And, you know, I felt like in the 39M, we we had a pretty good competitive see short season together. Um, Got one win, wish we could have got some more, but um, overall I thought we we were okay for a short period of time that we were together. So, um, and, that, and that deal was so much, you know, we went from one extreme type of driver to, you couldn't go farther apart than us two, than me and Anthony. So, <laughs> you know, that, that, there was a lot more learning there than, than probably a lot of people realize. Lance Deweese, Anthony Macri, that is a big, well, Joe Mooney, Joe Mooney, when he stepped in the middle of that, he had go, what in the world do we got going on here? Uh, I guess everything uh, happens and, and you know it as far as that goes. We're going to do this. We're going to step away. We got so much more we want to talk about, but we need to get this break in and we got more coming up with Lance Deweese. Stay with us. Perfection isn't easily achieved. It takes hard work, dedication, and perseverance. Through their commitment to excellence, Sage Fruit Company has been supplying customers with the best tree fruit in the Pacific Northwest for over three generations. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide consistent, high-quality apples and pears all year long. Look for Sage Fruit at your local grocery. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go back to the Sage Fruit Highline. We're talking to Lance Deweese. Lance, we had a great visit about your new opportunity with Shearer's racing team. And you talked about coming to Charlotte with two cars. Um, is, is part of this or what part of this is also mentoring a young racer? And do you look forward to, to, to that role you have beyond what you're already doing for your son? 
well, I've always enjoyed helping people. Um, you know, I used to help Trent Schaefer some uh, at Port Rolls when I wasn't racing um, until my son started racing. Um, I've always enjoyed helping people. You know, there's a lot of people help me come coming up through. So I enjoy helping the people. And, you know, I try to help Brent that night at Tuxworth 50 a little bit under the two reds and try to just keep him, try to keep him up front some. And, you know, he, he hasn't raced a whole lot sprint cars. So, you know, I thought he did really good because I even told him and I told my son begin night for the future that he wouldn't stay in the top 10, but he proved me wrong. So um, he did a really good job there. But no, that's part of it. Um, some of that there might be some opportunities with my son involved in this deal as far as getting to test a sprint car. That's one, probably one of the other reasons that I'm where I'm at, um, maybe down the road a little bit. So, you know, there, there's multiple reasons, but yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know how much Brent, Brent's got his own micro now again. And, um, you know, he'll probably be racing against my son more, th more so than anything I'm assuming. I love it. As speaking of your son, Cole, uh, turning out that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, obviously a wheel man, no doubt about it. But I love just a few weeks ago, you picked up the win at the Grove and you made it to Linda's to watch him race and end up parking it in victory lane. What's it mean to be able to share moments like that, especially when you're racing typically somewhere he's not and still being able to be there for him? Oh, it means a lot. Um, I tell everybody, he, he, he blew, he, he, blows me away with how quick he's picked up all this stuff for never racing nothing in his life until last year and has five wins this year and um he's doing really good and um he you know typical 16 year old he don't need his dad around but he's actually has learned a, a lot of it on his own and you know he's learned how to work on the race car what changes need to be made and also he don't need me a whole lot anymore but um we still enjoy going to watch him race um I'm getting way more enjoyment out of it than I thought I ever would. Um, I just didn't know how that, you know, never been in that position. So I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, I was really happy I got to see him win at Linda's because him and um, Tommy um, Beavers, who takes him and helps him when I can't, um, they've been really fast there all year and have had things go wrong. That's some of it is self-induced and some of it's just out of their control so uh, i was happy that they finally got the win there before the year is out and he's got some pressure he has more wins than i do this year so well that's right yeah we're keeping the win tally here he's uh he's keeping dad in check that's for sure i think that's awesome he sure is that's good that's a good that, that's a good family dynamic that's for sure lance i want to go way way back on something okay and one of our producers here he found some footage and i want to ask you your first win, Hagerstown, 1986. What do you remember? Tell me about that day. It was a day show. Um, funny thing is, I probably just watched the same video he, your your producer found not long ago, because um, it popped up. And um, yeah, it was a day show, and I passed Dan Dietrich, Danny's dad, <laughs> um, for the win. Um, and yeah, you know, just it was a, a you know. A good day for me, you know, especially being my first win ever. Um, my son and me have the same. If you looked how I reacted in Victor Lane, that's kind of how my son reacts in Victor Lane. We're not the most er energetic or excited people. We actually don't even look happy in Victor Lane. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, one of those things that, you know, it's all part of the maturing process and, you know, being more involved in it as years go. But, yeah, I was a pretty skinny guy back then. Have you ever taken the chance to kind of reflect on the career that you've had and what you've been able to accomplish now, especially that Cole's on the track and you get to kind of chat about things. Like you said, he he kind of does his own thing, but he's getting a late start in the racing world, right? 16 years old, just started racing last year. Uh, what's that dynamic like and what's it mean for you to kind of have the career that you've had and just have Cole stepping into racing now? Yeah, I do reflect more on it now than I, you know, than I did five, ten years ago. Um, and it's certain times, like we went out to Leonardville's High Limit race, me and Cole did to watch, on our way out to Indiana for his, he had a big race. Um, and I'm just sitting there, and my dad always loved Leonardville, so I'm just sitting there in the grandstands where I used to sit with my dad when we used to go out there and race when I first started, and just sat there and reflected on a lot of different things and that place there has always brought like memories into me because one it, i really always enjoyed being out there especially when don martin was living and was promoter of it and two my dad loved it so it always brings back memories with me and my dad of 
you know, how much we enjoyed being there. And, you know, it does, I do reflect on it, but then, yeah, I sit there and watch my son race, you know, and, you know, just how competitive he is. Um, I don't, I don't remember being like that when I was his age. Um, he, he, he hates not running good. Um, and it just, it's, it's, how do I word it? I'm happy he is not satisfied, but I also hope he has to realize you can't win them all. And I hope it drives him the right way, not the wrong way. So, you know, you know, from your husband and, you know, you can take stuff, you know, you can take failures the wrong way and, and not help yourself going forward. But so far he, he, he learns from them and just wants makes himself do better. Lance, when you look at the opportunity, we, we talked a little bit and we kind of laughed before the end of the last break. When you moved into the 39 M car, you and Anthony Macri could not be further, further apart from each other, but getting the opportunity to work with a veteran and a good crew chief like Joe Mooney, do you, do you bring stuff? What's that like to move in with a guy where there's, there, there, I'm assuming there's mutual respect there and getting a chance to bounce some ideas off some fresh faces and some fresh people? Well, I think, you know, a lot of things. First of all, I had R Ryan Hand as my crew chief for the first two races I ran right. there because yep. Joe was out the road with um, Justin Sanders racing all the high limit stuff and Knoxville and all that stuff. So, you know, now the me and Ryan together was easy because I have a relationship with Ryan. I've known Ryan a long time. You know, we've been around each other a long time. So that was a little easier. You know, Joe and I, he kind of had, you know, you, he had his ways. I had some suggestions of my ways and you kind of try to blend them, but blend them easily without trying to, you know, get so far off base. You were terrible because we, we were fast from day one in the car with speed as far as qualifying, but in racing, we were okay. And you know, at times we were better than other times, but you know, you had just had to kind of blend them together. And um, I told him the last race that we ran, and and afterwards when i kind of knew what was going to happen i mean i knew i was you know I mean, where i was going but i knew you know i kind of knew what was going to happen with the deal now i said just forget everything i i tried to show you with josh josh slick track stuff so we don't need anthony to learn how to be really good on dry slicks yeah because if that kid gets good on dry slick claps everyone's in trouble because that's the one we that's the that's the one thing that he still is working on although i watched him out at 34 raceway in that high limits race and he tiptoed around the bottom i thought it was lance Deweese in the car what a talent anthony macri is he is and i've, I've told everyone from day one you know even when i was at eldor when i showed up eldor and we were putting our seat in I told Joe then it nothing would made me happier if Nick would call me and told me Anthony was on his way out. Yeah. Um because yeah. to me that's who belongs in the race car. It's yeah. it's his car, his family's car. They built this into one of the best race teams in the country. And trust me when I tell you, there is nothing better in the pit area than that car. There's nobody's car any better. There's some very stout teams that are just as good, but there's nothing any better. And, you know, as I said all along, it's where he needs to be. You know, it's tough having family relationships and working together sometimes. Me and my brother went through this trying to race together and work together. So it can be really tough at times. So, you know, hopefully they got it ironed out and figured it out. And, you know, he had to grow up some, I think, a little bit and learn, you know, you know his stock didn't look great when he left this family deal necessarily, you know. And that's not necessarily anything with him. It's just the cars he went to didn't fit his style, didn't fit what he liked, and it wasn't there long enough to get it figured out. So it, it's it's I'm happy it's where it is back together right now, and you know, hopefully you know they have success not at the cost of me any though. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. They can win all of them that you're not in. That's it. So uh, awesome, Lance. Yeah. It is always a pleasure to chat with you. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Ashley. You guys have a great evening. There we go. Lance DeWeese joining us here on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Perfection isn't easily achieved. It takes hard work, dedication, and perseverance. Through their commitment to excellence, Sage Fruit Company has been supplying customers with the best tree fruit in the Pacific Northwest for over three generations. 
They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide consistent, high-quality apples and pears all year long. Look for Sage Fruit at your local grocery. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Love catching up with Lance DeWeese. One thing I love as much catching up with Lance DeWeese, Ashley, is getting to a sprint car race. You're spoiled rotten up there in Pennsylvania. You can go down the road and see a sprint car race. Those of us in North Carolina can't do it. So I drove to Washington West by God, Virginia, and saw the Ohio Valley Sprint Car Association. A guy named Randy Fink, uh, Fink owns this series. And uh, he's kind of a one-man band. He's running around on a four-wheeler. He's lining cars up. He's making sure everyone's paid. Does a great job with it. Uh, they started in 2010. 2013 season had 12 wins. Jake Hessen picked up the win, his third win of the season on Friday night. But Ashley, a guy that is enshrined in Knoxville, Iowa, was the champion for the Ohio Valley Sprint Car Association. Yes, we've been talking about this. It is none other than the Danny Smith. Uh, it's so cool to see him pick up another championship um, and a little feather in his cap, if you will, in my opinion. And I think you would agree, Steve. Yeah, he's got a lot of feathers in that cap, but another one added in there. It was just great to be at a racetrack and and uh, and to spend a little time with Danny and everyone with that crew. Ohio Valley Sprint Car Association, what a great, great group, that's for sure. All right, so that's all the upside. Lance DeWeese, Ohio Valley Sprint Car Association, Danny Smith. Ashley, we also learned that the Devil's Bowl is going away. Wow, historic racetrack this coming weekend is the last weekend of racing down there. Yeah, um, March 18th, 1978, Ted Johnson was the World of Outlaws, was the very first race at Devil's Bowl um, all these years later. Um, absolutely iconic. Um, hate to see this situation. We've talked about it with numerous tracks going away. Um, I don't even know what to say, Steve. It's heartbreaking, to say the least. Really, truly is. Lanny Edwards owned the racetrack. Uh, Lanny passed in 2016. The family has kept it rolling. But a lot of times what happens, and in, in there, there's been a lot of talk about family in this show. Um, a lot of times, one generation of the family and another generation of the family, and things kind of move on. And uh, the Edwards family has sold the racetrack. Now, this past weekend... They did have the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour out there, and a familiar face picked up the win as well in that one. Yes, uh, some guy named Sam Haferty Jr. Uh, picked up the win, actually swept the weekend. Um, so I'm sure Sam loved every bit of that. And then obviously, this weekend is the final races for the, for Devil's Bowl, ending it with a high note with the World of Outlaws and the Sprint Car Stampede. Yeah, what a way to end it for, for Devil's Bowl. You know, it, we get into this talking about racetracks, and, and and it, it, nothing lasts forever. We all understand that in the world. We all understand that in life. We understand that. That doesn't mean we got to like when a good racetrack goes away. So uh, if you are in the proximity, get to Devil's Bowl this weekend and be one last trip around the racetrack down there as well. So, uh, Ashley, we're down about 10 seconds to go. So good catching up with you. Man, we've covered a lot of ground here in this show, haven't we? We sure have, and it's been great. I wish we could share everything that we talk about off air, but you'll have to wait for that for another time. That's right. Next time, we'll be back with Wing Nation.